are these people? Yeah. Holy crap. So I follow this lady on on Substack, uh, the star of Appalachia. And she's obviously lives Coming in... To a Substack newsletter near you. Yeah, yeah. So she lives there. Um, <laughs> and and she, uh. she kind of published something the other day after like four days, you know, like they got hit, I think it was on the 30th or on the 29th. And she published this on the 3rd. So she says, a week ago, Tropical Storm Helene knocked out my power, cell service, internet, and water for four days. I spent those four days in blissful ignorance, reading books, cooking stews over a campfire, boiling creek water, and hanging out with family and neighbors. And meanwhile, my out-of-town family were all worried sick. They were seeing the dire news reports that I didn't have access to. And so it was only days after the storm when my power internet were, were finally restored that I was able to see how much worse many of my neighbors had it. And now that I've had a chance to get the lay of the land, here's my prognosis. This is serious, y'all. Helene is a hellion. Now, Jesse and Jess, have you ever been like in a hurricane? What I know you lived down in the Keys for a while, right? When you when you first met. And so, like, what's yeah. your experience with hurricanes? I was never in the Keys for anything super bad. We got hit by uh category one when I was there. Um, I think it was a two just before landfall. Um, but then I was in Panama City when uh, Opal hit, which was a, a big one in the 90s. Um, were you in the Keys? I was in the Keys um, right after Wilma. So in like, I don't remember what that was, 2005 or six. Okay. And then right after we went to the keys after Irma. Oh yeah. And that was a really bad one for them. Yeah. Huge mm -hmm. charge. Um, but there's not much to the keys. So mm -hmm. really any storm is a big storm for them with their storm surge. Cause there's so yeah. low, you know, at such a low elevation, but they're nasty. Yeah, for sure. How do they deal with that stuff? I mean, it's yeah. just, just brutal. Let me get back. Yeah. Here. I mean, when we went to visit, mm -hmm. it was still, it was a, couple months after the fact yeah and there was debris all along the highways still and we we were trying to find our friend's house that we'd been to a hundred times <laughs> and we couldn't we couldn't so recognize bad. it because all the trees were either just <sighs> gone or stripped and laid down um and and already while there's still debris everywhere here's all these signs about development that's coming in and all these little affordable housing and all these little trailer parks that got wiped out yeah. and get replaced with fucking you know condos that none of those people could ever afford to live in mm -hmm. um that happened <laughs> very very quickly you know right but yeah that it doesn't yeah. it doesn't take much in in areas like that um to to do a lot of damage um Oh, Catstro! I, I hear Catstro making making an appearance. I guess he wanted to join too. Uh, so, so what she says here was that in my town of Marshall, North Carolina, there was record flooding. Oh yeah. Volunteer crews have been hard at work cleaning up the tiny downtown area all week. For this work, it's necessary to don full hazmat gear because the floodwaters contain toxic sludge from destroyed industrial plants upriver. Toxic sludge is dried and become toxic dust, which is eating through the volunteers' boots. Holy Jesus shit. Christ. Yeah. All right. So yeah. watch this one. So first of all, there's... there's. And go ahead. Marshall only has 874 people, their population. It's a tiny, tiny, yeah. tiny town. So speaking of Marshall, I actually got the video for that from this TikTok and it... I can't play the music, obviously, but you can see yeah. the damage surveyed and it's a drone over, overhead footage. And it's just, there's, I mean, the streets are covered in disgustingness. Yeah. Buildings are trash. No, that's a lot of damage. Wait, uh, you're going to use that an awful lot tonight, Reef. I'll tell you right now. Cause I got, <laughs> I, I got a lot of, shouldn't. I, know I got, when you think about that all being like industrial waste. You know, I got a lot of damage. Thinking it's just mud, but like, fuck. Yeah, I mean, this is this is what happens when you get slow moving storm dumping loads of water in the water basins. And and like, if if all they're offering you right now is seven hundred and fifty bucks, 
what the hell do you think they're going to give you in 10 years when you got mesothelioma from cleaning up all this shit? You know? <laughs> like, yeah. God, look at that. It's just oh. pure mud everywhere. They literally have to just gut yeah, the insides I mean, of these stores because they were all the way up to the feelings. I yeah, mean, lucky, what would the storm surges here? Lucky all that water? brickwork is, is still fine, Oof. you know, but you're going to be talking about, like, complete remodels inside, most likely. Yeah. Right. Well, oh, and, for sure. and talk about mold, you oh, know, yeah. without the power oh, yeah. stuff, the, the mold mm -hmm. there has just got to be yeah. outrageous. Yep. And they got to spray all that stuff down. I mean, you can down. get some stuff, get air blowers in to dry everything out, like, but it's still, I mean, that costs you money. Yeah. Yeah. All this is money, you know? Well, hopefully, like, the guy sitting at the top of the house, yeah. you know, top of the hill, who has the money to, like, throw around is going to be fine. Are you going to see a ton of foreclosed homes in here that can't be fixed? That's going to get bought out. I'm sure BlackRock and Vanguard will come in and, mm -hmm. and decide to, you know, buy out huge swaths of land. So, right. you know, this happens in just about every disaster, no matter what the cause. Mm -hmm. So back to our slideshow so, here. This is the record flooding, and you can see in Marshall how high the water yeah, level went. Jesus. Six foot of water. Oh, no, that's like a good more. 10 or 11 foot at least mm -hmm. i mean because that's up yeah. to like the second it's floor the second story mm -hmm. yeah all right and here's all the debris all the stuff that's in the water yep yeah that's what sucks and then they're going to talk about chimney rock she talks about chimney rock and lake lure two high elevation sister towns mainly focused on tourism at least for now right the villages ha hillside houses basically the whole community were washed into the lake now Brooke Hines actually did a whole thing about Chimney Rock and Lake Lure and how and, and what the demographic of the people who live there are. What she said here, Jesus, look at that. Western North Carolina's largest city, Asheville, was hit extremely hard. The sheer volume of floodwaters on the banks of the French Broad and Swananoa Rivers, Swananoa. right, was imaginable. Swananoa, yep. Yeah. Right. The destruction is widespread, severe, mm -hmm. and positively overwhelming. Just nice wow. that party bars lasted though you know oh, they float. <laughs> the they party know, bars made it they know how to float right so most of Asheville is still without power and water now this was a few days ago i still think a lot of that is still happening the power is expected to be restored by tomorrow to many neighborhoods we'll see but municipal water and sewage system has been so severely damaged that no one is making any promises or declaring timelines for getting it fixed yeah, welcome to America, where they don't fix shit, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Many surrounding towns are in even worse shape. There are, there are still residents of nearby towns mm -hmm. in more remote areas who are stranded without food, water, or communications due to impassable roads. We're going to look at some of those in a minute. More people are being reached every day. Um, from my little holler, I see, I hear helicopters flying overhead a dozen times a day. It should be even more than that, but good to start. They're scanning the ground for SOS messages, signs of survivors, airdropping supplies to tiny mountain communities cut off from the world. The official death counts of 150 for an entire region affected by the storm in 64. Mm -hmm. right? More than that now, I think. Right, confirmed from by North Carolina. Seen. It's likely lower. Yeah, I saw at least 200. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. So they describe really what it's going to be like if you have to live through this. Here's your day to day. Our internet service has been restored in some areas, including my neighborhood. Right, Power means clean water for people who are on a well, but for those whose water comes from municipal systems, there's still a boil warning. We don't have reliable cell, cell reception, if at all. Although some people have had power internet restored to their homes, many of us are unable to make or receive phone calls. I mean, I've got a backup generator, but that's going to rely on gas delivery from the gas company. If the pipes are fucked up and they turn off the gas, guess what? My backup generator is useless. Mm -hmm. And that's probably yeah. people with the whole house generators are dealing with there. Stores are reopening in limited areas that have power restored, but they're almost universally cash only. You hear that, crypto people? Yeah. Cash only. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Most ATMs are either offline or out of cash, and many banks are still closed. 
In my local town, uh, a local credit union branch has mounted a valiant effort to serve its members in this great time of uncertainty. Even though they're without internet, they somehow devise a system whereby a couple of tellers whose personal cell phones are operational use their phones to call a Raleigh branch where dedicated tellers enter account numbers into the computer system. Yeah, that's totally secure to enable cash transactions at the local branch. Of course, this also means that members still have to wait upwards of 45 minutes to withdraw funds and still we're so thankful. Amazing. And amazing people that are doing this and, and taking the risk like this. There are long lines for gas as well, if you can find it. Many of the open grocery stores are limiting the number of people who can enter at once. So there are lines to buy groceries too. And stock is, of course, dwindling. The biggest food bank in the region, despite a strong effort to save its score, store of food, had its warehouse flooded. And that definitely impacts the availability of relief food. But other local charities, certain corporate supermarket chains, and spontaneously formed groups of neighbors are rising to the challenge. And I've got stuff about that too. But I did want to, you know, kind of give this this woman who survived and sat and dealt with this for days, uh, kind of go through her story and then we'll go through all the all the tweets and everything because I put together a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, immediately in the days after the storm, I began to see inspiring stories of mountain people helping each other, of folks on horses and mules carrying supplies to the more remote communities that have been cut off by this storm. I saw something even on like one of the corporate news channels where they were talking about that of restaurants and food trucks, hooking up generators and serving free food to the community as you should, as Kit would say, mm -hmm. of friends running dangerous supply missions to Charlotte and back of neighbors building foot bridges across ravines. So people can get out to buy groceries. Yes, it's dire, but Appalachia has got this. Um, it's going to be a very long recovery. There are still upwards of 400 road closures in Western North Carolina alone. And I've got a map of those. Fortunately, the two major highways that were severely damaged have been partially repaired so we can get supplies in and evacuees out of the region. Sort of. But they didn't really fix I-40 or 25. I'll show you that. That's that's some of the road closures that we're dealing with here. All right. It's, yeah. it's everywhere. You know, it's like... It's like... A labyrinth. You run into this. I know. Closure. Got to go back. I saw. I, uh, well, I always, I always put a chainsaw in the back of the truck coming back from hurricane just in case. You know? I, that's probably a good like, idea. Yep. You know. Interrupt me if you guys have anything to say. I, yep. I go fast. Uh, Dr. Nick in chat, uh, chat just chimed in that um, people have been uh, waiting in line up to four hours to get in to get groceries. Right. Yep. There we go. Yeah, we don't. Jesse, we would never have a thing like bread lines here. That would right. never. How dare you? What is this communist how China? Dare you? <laughs> bread lines? What? <laughs> Cat, Castro comes in. Did someone say bread lines? What? <laughs> no, bread? actually, he heard, he heard communism because. Uh. <laughs> you know, he he somehow can hear through your earphone, your earbuds. Right? Oh, he can. I'm sure he's got microscopic. In my hearing. mind, Castro only responds to Cuban Spanish. That's in my head. That's <laughs> you know, Andre <laughs> Evo. All right, is that better for you guys? Uh, or or uh, if you want to, the pin, other way was you okay. can actually pin it and make it bigger in Zoom. By the way. Oh, I'm I'm a pin it. Yeah, we did. Um, I still think the other one looks better. Do you? By the way, well, um, a little bit, just for reading purposes for us. But okay. whatever. But um, uh, she continues. I want to thank everyone who's prayed for my neighbors. Everyone who's reached out with words of concern and encouragement. Everyone who's offered financial help for our recovery efforts. The vast majority of commentary I've seen from people online has been full of love and support. And I've seen a lot of that, too. And I've seen a lot of, yeah. why the hell are we giving money to fucking Israel and Ukraine right now when we need money to give to these people? Mm -hmm. Which is overwhelming, what I've been hearing a lot of, and I agree with. However, there has also been some blaming victim, victim blaming. Uh, a bit too early, if you ask me. I've seen some heartless and ridiculous comments about how Appalachians have no excuse to say we didn't know the storm would be this bad and 
that we should have yeah. been better prepared. I want to address this mentality briefly here. And Jesus. she talks about how they're we, preppers and yeah. Go ahead, Jess. Oh, I was just going to say, we, we love to point the finger at poor people. It's always poor people. So whoever the poorest person is, that's who is going to get the most blame. In the yeah, situation. exactly. <laughs> how well, dare right. you people that don't have money in small towns of 800 people, not just go hundreds of miles away and get a hotel. <laughs> What's wrong right. Wasn't it more yeah, like fudge cool. rounds? Wasn't there a song about fudge rounds? I remember about a year or so ago mm -hmm. that people lost their yeah, minds about for about that. six thankfully, weeks. <laughs> thankfully, I don't remember that until you brought it up. Thankfully. Right. <laughs> you know. My PTSD, my Oliver Anthony PTSD is kicking. <laughs> right? But remember. Jesse hears that and just, this yeah. is ready, you know? Appalachian. Uh, Appal well, let's move on. Shoulders. Let's move on from that clown. But although <laughs> he's from Appalachia, Appalachians in general are vastly more prepared for disaster than the average American, especially when they have two number one hits back to back. But that's another story for another <laughs> another article. Well, dude, he's still stuck at Burning Man, bro. Don't worry about it. Yes, we're, we're still waiting. We're still waiting for that for that Midwestern March interview. Come on. But, what? Huh? But most mountain people are rural, competent, resilient as fuck, and and fluent in the old ways. We can still garden. We still garden. Can can not just can, but they they do the can can, and they actually do can and preserve and hunt and raise livestock and make their own herbal medicines and I think they make their own pelts mm -hmm. too out there. And, they play the banjo. We know that. No, I'm kidding. Practically every holler has at least... Some of them do. Some of them do. Practically every holler has at least two dudes who own a track hoe or a bulldozer or know how to grade a driveway or divert a creek. Many of us drive old yep. pickup trucks, heat our homes with the wood that we cut and split ourselves, and do our own auto repairs. We can, like I said, <laughs> skid a butt, run a trout line, and all that. A mountain boy can survive, right? We get flash bullets. <laughs> right, like me. I'm a, I'm, I'm a tough mountain boy over here. Uh huh. We, high school football game song PTSD. Okay, I'm going to be all right. Uh -huh. I've heard that way too many times. Anyway, continue. They get flash um, floods every year in Appalachia. Most people here are prepared for normal flash flooding if they live in flood zones. This wasn't normal, it was more on a biblical scale. Also, it wasn't just people in valleys and hollers that were affected. We're talking about landslides that took the sides off of mountains and brought houses and entire towns down with it. Like, literally, they, they there's a town that's gone. It's off the map. All the houses are gone. Everything. Destruction on a scale unprecedented in this area. And again, just like saying we've never had a flash flood, I'm not saying we've never seen a land landslide. Yes, they happen from time to time, especially on roadways that are graded into the sides of mountains they're used to that stuff but if they but they don't typically happen everywhere all at once combined with record flooding of towns everywhere all at once and power grid destruction everywhere all at once i don't think people understand the scope here now again you you two have lived in all three of you have lived in florida so you kind of do know the scale and still scale. do <laughs> i'm sorry that's, that's i mean your, i got that's your fault I got hit with this one. Yep. Yep. Somewhat. So, yeah, they had, he had to one is bad for us. You had to evac, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Luckily, I can afford to do that and pick up the pets and parents and head to a hotel room, spend 170 a night, you know, for like three or four. Like that's most people don't can't afford or even get close to being able to do that. So, you know. And, like, you might get lucky and have a house where you're going to be fine, you know. But most of the time, especially in the area I'm in, we're right on the water. Storm surge is going to, I mean, Perry got owned, which is not that far from me. So, you know, like, I, I don't know if, it, if there's anything left there. I think there's, you know, it was mainly a couple of stop stoplight town, but. I heard they got pretty bad. So somebody go over to Rockfin. It's just a slow moving a rumble. Hurricane. Sorry. Get, sorry. Somebody go yeah. over to Rumble and give our friend Anna some love over there. We're sorry. We're sorry. Yep. All right. She doesn't want to join the evil empire over on YouTube, but it's lonely over there. So yeah. 
Rumble.com slash C slash Indie News Network. We're over there. If, if it makes you feel any better, pretty soon we won't have a YouTube press all to that, go to. That's so we'll right. Have to be over there. <laughs> that's right. Either that or you'll have to join Dr. Nick over on Kick. He's he's hanging out over there. Dr. Nick, yeah, send him to Kick. Send him to Kick. Yeah, we need we need to catch Kit. We're we're only 130 behind him. We're 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 right there. Oh, we can. Yeah, do that. we can take that. But like she says, we'll it would be. Concert. We'll do a concert on Kick one night. Uh, it would be impossible to what? be to be fully no. prepared. A, a, a concert, no. yes, concerts. We like I concerts. You said it would be impossible. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunate. Oh <laughs> it would be impossible uh, to be fully prepared for an event of this scale. It takes a hundred times the manpower to repair infrastructure that's destroyed everywhere all at once, than can be reasonably expected to have. Right. Fortunately, we yeah. have. The linemen, like not the football linemen, but the real linemen, road crew, and other tradesmen arriving from out of town and out of state, like they do every hurricane and disaster like this, by the hundreds to assist the local yep. crews. Amazing. It takes many times mm -hmm. the resources to provide for people who, prepared or not, lost their homes, lost power, lost access to clean water. Now, this was before they had the visit from our wonderful president. I'm positive there are probably lessons here to be learned about how to be pre better prepared. That is true in any disaster situation. But to tell that to the Appalachian people that we should have known is a callousness is beyond belief. Yeah. Yeah. You know the you know the thing. Right. As a low key prepper. Yeah. Jesus. She has to reiterate this truth to other <laughs> preppers all the time. And this is really this is the reason one of the reasons why I brought this whole article. Being prepared yeah. does not guarantee that you'll make it through whatever catastrophe you're envisioning with minimal loss. I think that's like so important because yeah. your envisioning cannot take into account every contingency that's a disaster, natural or man-made, that will throw at you. The community of Chimney Rock, we've got stuff about them, has ex had existed for 100 years, over 100 years, and it's simply no more. There was... Nothing that could have prepared those people for the literal wiping of them off the map of their town. The surrounding communities were prepared with the equipment and the willpower to make their way up, up their roads uh, that no longer exist to rescue survivors. That's all about the preparation one could expect in that particular situation. I mean, you, you can't do much. Yeah. Right. So no. the truth is many, many people were... Uh, about as prepared as they could have been. And those people, along with people who were less affected by property damage and loss of life, have been boots on the ground helping neighbors who weren't either weren't as prepared or who solely due to this to their geographic position suffered the worst losses. And we're talking losses that that's the top of a Wendy's. Not the Wendy's. Like have have you ever been in a where's, Wendy's? Have you ever seen how tall that the fucking beef? sign is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that whole yep. unimaginable before last week, right? Mm -hmm. And hey, what a shock. Mutual aid, but not government aid, is most effective. One thing I want to make clear to most people, the people watching this aftermath play out from afar, it's the local people, local businesses, local house of worship, and charities who are doing the most majority of the relief work and making recovery happen at the stage and she expects that to continue, which it has. This isn't the same as other hurricane relief efforts that we've seen. This reminds me of like Andrew in the 90s where it was really, really bad. Like, yep. Yep. right? Yeah. In that we were never advised to evacuate. And the people who were got like 10 minutes. And I heard, I saw a video of that I didn't bring. <laughs> no one could have predicted it would be bad enough to necess necessitate evacuation. Now, you guys have a whole thing you wanted to talk about with regard to HARP, which may play into why nobody had any any warning and mm -hmm. this just kind of mm -hmm. dumped on everyone out of nowhere all of a sudden in areas where it should never have done that. Mm -hmm. In a way, it's sad because it means that many more people died than might have if we'd had better prediction of the storm severity. And in, in, in another way, it's good because we had local boots on the ground on day one, I, I guess, right? There's a spontaneous order that emerges at the intersection of skill set and necessity if we let it. Like, this is trying to pull some kind of positive. For instance, the Asheville area is home to a vibrant music scene, and 
hosts many popular music festivals both in the city and surrounding rural areas each summer. One of the first alliances to get started on serious relief efforts were local festival crew, coordinating with local businesses to provide bottled water, prepared meals, Wi-Fi hotspots, baby supplies, other needs to folks in Asheville. Mm-hmm. Right? These festy kids, festy kids, right? You make fun of the, the Ren Fair kids, are now branching out to deliver needed supplies to surrounding communities. Huge. State and federal agencies and national NGOs are here by this point, but by the time they arrived, the locals had already gotten started and still a week in, I'm hearing reports of the government agencies still getting ready to get ready or directing Mm -hmm. (laughs) self-deployed volunteers to cease their efforts. Right. That's the other thing we've been seeing. And I got that a lot of that too many reports to dismiss. That's why I'm bringing it. Most of the real efforts I'm seeing are being efficiently organized um, and directed by local people. What a surprise. Almost all the aircraft running search and rescue missions and airdropping supplies are privately owned. I got one of those too. Civilian, I don't have a, a helicopter, but videos of a guy with a helicopter. If I had a helicopter, yeah. wow, I'd be down there myself. But civilians are using their own four wheel drive vehicles and ATVs to deliver supplies to areas cut off due to impassable and roads. Boats and all that stuff. Yeah. And hopefully they don't smash into um, other boats. That's our other show. Um, yeah. I'm not reporting on any of this as a plea to send more government help or get the Red Cross or Salvation Army to do more. God almighty, they don't do nearly what they should. Um, Please, if you want to help, donate to the local nonprofits and churches or send funds to individuals you know who live in affected areas. They know the terrain and how to navigate it. They know who needs help and what kind of help is needed. They're competent and capable. They don't have international boards of directors to answer to. Do you hear us, Red Cross? Right. And they know where to put your donated funds for maximum impact. And as well, they won't take a 10% or 15% cut off the top like the Red Cross does or more. They aren't burdened with unnavigable labyrinths of bureaucracy, nor do they have pressing expenses to fund like foreign wars. We don't have any of those, do we? What? And then here, any, any words to fix the hurricane? We've given them everything we have. Any more resources that they could be giving? Come on, no. man. Yeah, exactly. Give me a little break here. No. Yep. No. It. All right. Then she's got. When, he's, when he, he had to clarify, he goes, which storm? What storm are we talking about? All right. Which storm? <laughs> a hurricane. Right. North Carolina. He goes, oh, they have everything they need. They're very happy. All right. Very now. happy. Very, very good. Great. Excellent. Very good Thanks, people. <laughs> and you ain't black. Right now, again, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, hey, I, I, I mean, he's right, he's right, he's right. <laughs> Corn Pop was a bad dude. Well, he was, and he, and, he, and he did ran a bunch of bad boys yeah. for sure. All right, and he ran a bunch of bad boys. And an overrun rumble with a twenty dollar <laughs> with a twenty dollar rumble rant. Woohoo! We got a rumble rant. Nice. She says, I'm nice. convinced the more pure love talent is spawned in our reality, the more evil lizard structures quake. Take it all down. <laughs> Had your song for the fundraiser stuck in my head all week. Which one? 13 that gets us popped on YouTube, and I love it. I can't stop singing it either. <laughs> I love it. Every every time, you know, whoever, whoever, right, you can have the money. Whatever three cents YouTube is making on it, it you have it. Mm-hmm. But meanwhile, <laughs> our friend is is safe. Their their family are fine. They're blessed. They're about as prepared as they could have been in terms of food storage, the ability to survive without modern conveniences for a few days. Mm-hmm. Although they were more than fortunate that many of their neighbors, they the disaster has impacted their ability to earn an income and pay the bills and sign up on yeah. coming to a substack near you, which is five bucks a month if you can do that. Um, yeah. and I also brought a couple things. So now we got some other stuff about like, let's look into how bad this is. And I love how world world socialist website calls it for what it is. Capitalism. Come on. I was waiting for, mm-hmm. for my Tim, Cur- for my Cur- Tim Curry. Sound I don't even know what that is. Capitalism. Oh, okay. 
That's it. Come on. Capitalism. Thank you. Capitalism. Yes. Capitalism. <laughs> right? Okay, just making sure we got Tim Curry in there. Um, so, yeah, this, you know. this is Tom Hall over at World Socialist website. And this is just a couple of slides talking about what happened devastation-wise and the numbers. 100,000 people without power, at least at that point, only 40 people. Now it's many more. 40% of the country, uh, county's population and water systems collapsed due to a combination of flooding, wind damage, and a loss of power. This yep. is this is like crazy. $150 billion. You know, someone would w wondering what's the damage going to cost. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Across six states. All right. $150 billion. Uh, Augusta, Georgia has had no power. Had no you power. With a billion dollars? No power. 150 billion. 200,000 people without, without billion? power. All right. 11 inches of rain in less than 48 hours. Like, yeah, everybody's Atlanta, basements were Metro. flooded. That's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> everybody's basements were flooded. Yep. So despite well-publicized claims Hard. of a massive relief effort, most storm survivors have received little or nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. A spokesman for the North Carolina National Guard said the Guard troops had brought in 100,000 pounds of water and food through airlifts right, at the Asheville Airport intended for distribution in eight counties in, in North Carolina. Given that nearly a million people affected uh, just in that area, that comes to a few ounces per person three days after the hurricane yep. upended their lives. Yeah, thanks. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Not the right kind of ounces either. Just saying. Right. Sorry, that was our driver. You know. <laughs> <laughs> scared the hell out of me. <laughs> right. Um, since Helene struck only five weeks before the presidential election, the Democratic and Republican candidates quickly proclaimed their sympathy for the victims <clears throat> and pledged federal and state yep. aid, of course. Prayers were treated. Again, I love World Socialist you know. website. Fascist Republican ex-president Donald Trump visited Valdosta, Georgia, Monday to take in the distribution oh. of relief supplies by a fundamentalist church. He managed to avoid the degrading scene. He managed to avoid the degrading scenes that accompanied his visit to Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria, where, of course, he was seen shooting free throws of, to of paper towels yeah. to angry survivors in that storm. Thank you very much. That's really nice. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Democrat, fascist, uh, Kamala Harris rushed back to Washington for a photo op visit to the headquarters of FEMA. I didn't clip the picture, but the best is like where she's got an earbud in her ear and, and the thing's not plugged into anything. It's mm -hmm. just, it's just, not come. it's just classic hair. <laughs> right. She, of course, shot, cut, cut short a fundraising trip to California, expected to raise more than $60 million. Now we need the Dr. Evil music. For her campaign, <laughs> mainly from the Silicon Valley moguls, Cretans, and San Francisco financiers and scumbags, um, yep. right? Um, <laughs> yep. The crypto and and tech bros. The White House announced that President Fossil will visit North Carolina on Wednesday, <laughs> although it will apparently be limited to a visit. Uh, with the governor and Raleigh, a little ball licking by there by him. And thank you for sending all you can, Mr. President, even though you can barely speak. Uh, that's going to be in, in Raleigh, the state capital, followed by the helicopter overflight of the devastated Asheville region, which, of course, closed the fucking airspace for four hours and stopped yeah. all of the fucking <laughs> helicopter flights in the region for a temporary flight restriction. Yeah. Thanks, dickheads. Yep. Now let's see some of the <laughs> let's see some of the damage. Now they've they started to repair some of this. This is like a major interstate highway between North Carolina and Tennessee. And what they tell truckers yep. is, here's the route that we expect you to take to go around <laughs> this little me mess oh. of a shot. All right, you've got to go all the fuck the way around here to get around the damage to get right there, which you would have gotten if you'd just gone right there. How many days do you have to go? 
out of your way to do that as a trucker. Anthony Malecki, I'm sure, is in chat somewhere. He can tell us. Holy shit. I mean, that's the miles alone is enough. As, you know? I, as I mentioned, Pro probably so, long enough that you would have to stop for the night legally because yeah. you only have so many hours you're allowed to drive in a day. And then there's, a yeah, that's extra, at least, yeah, that's, oh, yeah. that's at least two way. full piss chugs worth, you know, at least. In each direction, because you got to get you got a deadhead right. too. Otherwise, you pick up another load and keep going. But yeah, and I didn't see anybody else show this map, so I was glad that I had this one on a freeways. It's hard, and that came yeah. right for the North Carolina mm -hmm. DOT. Like that was a few days ago. Now I think again they have a lot of this stuff repaired. I twenty six, which enters North Carolina, which enters North Carolina north of Asheville, is fully open in the state. But for drivers in that area, the problem is that the road close, is closed once they try to enter Tennessee. The storms, the state storm update listed five destroyed bridges. Who are on I-26, mm. eastbound and westbound at mile marker 39.6. Wow. Um, yeah, don't drive there. Or your, your truck's going to go boom. The other destroyed bridges are all yeah. on state roads. All right. No. Yep. An official with the Tennessee DOT said the closure on the Tennessee side is from the state line to exit 37 in Unicoi County. So that's like, that's far. That's far. Mm -hmm. All right. and, and it's really not. And that's, that's 40. That's literally like the, that little dash of 40 is where that X is where the bridge is out. And right there, bang, bang. Like, where are you going? There's nowhere to go. So of those five bridges... Tennessee's commissioner of transportation told a media briefing that there's nothing there. And so those are going to have to start from scratch and be rebuilt. But the state's already begun to award contracts who's, who's to get the construction get moving quickly. Yeah. The ones who are there and yeah. shovel ready. Right. Mm -hmm. And lowest bid. Mm, usually. Yeah. Not necessarily in a disaster like this when federal money's coming in. All right. A database sure. of all road closures on Monday morning listed more than 450 road closures throughout the state, the vast majority of them citing weather event as the cause of the closure. What a surprise. But one is more important than the rest, which is I-40, which the rest of, which to the west of Asheville enters North Carolina at its border with Tennessee in the Great Smoky Mountains and along the Pigeon River, whose flooding has been one of the key contributors to the devastation and havoc in the area. So... Now I've got some stuff uh, that I'd rather bring here through the tweets. Okay, so we did that one. I got that. Um, here's one of the other overheads. Debris is seen in the aftermath. That's just right on, on day one, on the 30th. And you see those, rain tra those train tracks are just wiped out. All right. Here's that, that road where, you know, the I-40, the bridge right now. Here's another one. I have to mute this one, but... Most people have probably seen this one, but they're driving again through. Guys, this is fucking unreal. No music. Good job, boys. Holy shit, unreal. Yep. Power lines down everywhere. This is October 2nd. This is three days after the storm. All right, now I have no. to. And they want. Keep in mind, like, yeah, a lot of people see this destruction. What they don't see is just the ancillary stuff that isn't here for all the people who were here. Like, you can't do laundry. Yeah, cooking is probably going to be pretty difficult. Like, you know, it's the little stuff. You know, you people don't have clean clothes to wear for, this is what, three days after, you know, like, well, I remember, you know, you know I, had, I had family in Katrina. Watch this one. Where, Here's like, Here's a before and after. Watch this. Like, yeah, that's all. Bye bye. Yep. Bye bye. But like, you know, it's gone. He, he went shirtless because he didn't have, didn't have like a shirt, and ended up getting like third degree sunburn, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Here you it is know? again. Now we're like, restarting here. Look at that. All right, that's courtesy of Near Map. That was October 3rd from overhead. Mm -hmm. Just half the house is gone. Everything in there damaged, gutted. And I hope insurance companies are insured. 
You know, this is why everybody pays in all that money for the insur for insurance. The question is, is will it actually be paying uh, out? Allegedly. The end? Will it actually be paying Probably out? Probably not. You know, I once had an accountant that used to say, you know, nothing like a good natural disaster to 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 prime an area with some fresh money. Um yeah. You know, um cool. you know, so here's here's Cam Cam. You exist I, in the I can't I can't even for 100 percent federal reimbursement of local costs. All right. The burden to local governments. I can't believe she really said burden. She really said burden. You exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. Unreal. Just meaningless. Right. Um, all right. Well. So. But, you think you just fell out of a coconut tree? But Lolo says, where were you when the people of Maui needed you? You suck ass at your job. They ain't here. They shut down airspace for 45 <laughs> hours, and no other planes could get in. They were hanging out with Oprah. There's a whole lot of towns in North Carolina far worse off than Asheville, and we're going to talk about some of those. All right. Then we have our friend Jack's page, $750. This is how little your government thinks of its citizens. All right. And... We got that. You can see that pretty well. No, Don't they owe, owe us another like seventeen hundred dollars the last time they promised us stuff? You know? Oh. Yeah, I mean you're talking about thousands in damages everywhere. Like, dude, like just collapsed into nothing to yeah. itself. Whoa. That it's not. Look at that. I don't know if they know the cost of plywood anymore, but like 750 bucks is like three sheets anymore. So, you know. Plywood? Yeah. No, you just just, like, just slap some drywall on that, right? <laughs> just wow. Yeah, dude, wow, just duct wow. tape. It'll be fine. Just duck it? Just duck it. That's right, dude. All Gorilla right. tape. All right, back to the slideshow view. So now we're big. Good. Okay, so we're out of here. Next, I've got this one. Um, Fee. Hi, Fee. $750 is more of an insult to injury. This is disgusting. Americans are facing thousands of dollars in losses, and many will never recover. And, of course, I had to clip <clears throat> the moment where she says, um, And the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met, such as food, baby formula, and the like. And you can apply now for anyone who's watching this who has been affected. There are FEMA personnel who are going do door to door to interact personally with folks, There's especially those who barely do barely a have door there behind but her. Also, um, <laughs> that, that aid, if you have electricity, can be applied for online. And I encourage people to do that. FEMA will just basically verify Wait. your address and then oh, the okay. should take um, hold. <laughs> I'm going to uh, say, like, if you don't have electricity, you could do that online. But no, she said, um, if you yeah. have. FEMA providing $750 for folks. Unreal, unbelievable. I, I can't even listen to her. But $750, is she kidding? They gave people 1200 for two years plus 600 Some never got it all for the COVID mm -hmm. Debacle. She's not kidding. Yeah, that's right, Fee. Yep. Um, Please, I, Fee. I wish I could Come remember on. who had made the point, but um, they were talking about uh, the uh, applying the whole process mm -hmm. that um, they said, you know, our government, they absolutely know when you take a shit, mm -hmm. they know what you watched this morning, <laughs> you know? We know yeah. whose house got wiped Why? out. We can Why? do an aerial scan and go, these people's addresses are gone. These people need relief. You shouldn't have to go apply and lift a fucking finger if you don't have anything left. There's no excuse when we can go, you know, <laughs> heat scan a building in the Middle East and find out who's in it and then drone bomb it. We can get relief to everyone who lost their home. We can see that. And we can fucking do it. And it's it's bullshit to to act like we can't. That's it looks like the pier. Hey, everybody remember that, that? that we built. 
that that's our two doesn't exist Gaza anymore. Pier. That's our two hundred and thirty million dollar Gaza Pier that lasted twenty days. Mm-hmm. But seven hundred and fifty dollars per Jesus. American who lost everything to the hurricane. Yeah. Thanks, fam. Oh. Victory Jin, oh, shout out. To be fair, they got their money out of that though, because they used it to disguise aid and then it brought in a bunch of troops and they massacred a refugee camp. So that's probably yeah. worth it for the US. Yeah, a military peer brought military personnel and equipment. Who would have thought that would happen? And and no, they didn't oh. they didn't attack anyone and they didn't injure anyone. No, no, sh- no none they of that happened. Never. And the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing seven hundred and fifty dollars. Just a reminder of how much we're getting seven fifty if you live there for your life. A couple of boxes of Twinkies at Dollar General. Seven hundred and fifty bucks. Those? Three three trips to the grocery store. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, seriously. <laughs> seven hundred fifty bucks. Bidenomics. All right. Mm-hmm. Next, we got this one. Okay, so here's where it starts to turn, and you start to read about like, what the hell's really going on here? Mm-hmm. A whistleblower in North well, Carolina. Let me get my tinfoil hat on. Yeah, let's let's put your Alex. Do we have <laughs> you know? Alex? Do we have any Alex Jones here? I I, I don't know. No. No. We do a little no, trolling. Alex. It's called we do a little trolling. Right. They're turning all the frogs gay. <laughs> right. They're turning the frogs gay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. A whistleblower, yeah. right? Uh, and Cynic says, right, you have to qualify for all, for any assistance on top of it. The yeah. lack of federal, ex- yep. yeah, it, yeah. means tested. Plenty of people that say they're getting denied outright. All their neighbors are getting denied. We got onto the website, can't get through. It's saying no. Like no fucking bullshit. Here's a million hoops to jump through. You know, Bruh. Here's here's Charlie Mac fam. <laughs> Hundred bucks says Holocaust Harris can't name all the states without a cute card or earpiece. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I couldn't do that, so I'd yeah. get stuck and be like Tennessee, Georgia. <laughs> like I'd I'd have difficulty. Uh right. Uh Jesse is here. Yes, crab. Jesse and Jess are here. Yes, Jesse is here. <laughs> Surprise! Where the fuck are you guys been? We've been here for like an hour already. Let's go. All right. My wife. All right. So here, here's where it goes off the rails. <laughs> a whistleblower claims that the U.S. government is seizing land in Chimney Rock, North Carolina, following a disaster. Allegedly. Allegedly, YouTube. Allegedly. This is not me. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. Disclaimer, heavy disclaimer, refusing to allow residents to return. They allege bodies, allegedly. Bodies are being left uncollected and federal authorities are preventing recovery efforts. Residents are struggling without food and water with reports of increasing crime. Volunteers are attempting to help, but there's dire need for a broader response, including military assistance. Wait, there. Our military is not busy doing anything right now, are they? <laughs> no so they're not busy they're just hanging out so some of the people in in replies kind of have an idea of what's happening is this to do with the lithium mining or the pure quartz production hmm, i've tried to ignore those rumors posted no. online nah. people need to ignore the government orders when they violate our rights as citizens pretty sure i heard this yep. theme story in maui second verse same as the first mm-hmm. you see a lot of that going on now somebody here says that it will not be bulldozed despite claims. And of course, that's corporate media trying to. According to officials. Mm-hmm. Right. Nothing to we see here. We ourselves and clear ourselves of any wrongdoing. <laughs> Please disperse. Right? Um, For real. Damn, it must be true. So now this is the other one that I was like, uh, yeah, that, I got to bring this. Red Cross and FEMA Tima has arrived and all, donate, all donations that have been given to local high school volunteers have been confiscated. Again, that's Chimney Rock. Nice. Whoa, what happened here? Okay, there we go. Um, broke it. Starting with Davy Crockett High School, they're taking over all volunteer schools in Washington County and Greene County in order for, for anyone, allegedly, in order for anyone to get donations that was given, they must be approved. Now, I saw something about that. All monetary donations have been taken as well and placed into a TEMA account. If you're unaware of how that works, those items don't all get used yeah. for this particular disaster even. Mm-hmm. So fucked up. Volunteers have been you asked... save some disaster money for later. 
No, they're going to spread it around and send it down to Georgia. Yeah. Volunteers have been yeah. asked to leave and were told that in order to help, they must be trained by the United Way. Mm. <laughs> please. Okay. I already made, I know I already made a post on Red Cross and FEMA the other day, but please, if you donate, donate to a church or give to individuals. They cannot take supplies from churches. Church members will make sure your donations get to the correct hands. We're still taking donations here, as well as picking up donations this weekend. Our donations will be going directly to churches to help the communities. Um, and I know several others that are picking up donations and taking them as well. Just incredible people. I can put you in contact with those churches. And she's tagging, you know, big, big accounts uh, right underneath this guy with the, the whistleblower guy. Right? So what's going on here? Well, here's another one. Stranded people were begging this South Carolina helicopter pilot to rescue them. So he tried to, but he was forced to leave and threatened with arrest if he came back to get more people. And that's over a four-minute segment on the evening news. I don't want to play that, but that's in and Queen good, City good News. Good for the local news for even touching that story. Right? Yeah. Yeah, seriously. They're, they'll get in trouble for that by Sinclair or whoever their broadcast home is. Right. At some point. That's Truth Stream mm -hmm. Media. By the way, Truth Stream Media, um, Ryan from The Last American Vagabond, that's Melissa Dykes, shared a um, video that they produced about what's going on in North Carolina that people should definitely check out that goes even deeper into this than we're going tonight. A lot more conspiracy depth. But here's here's another guy, a MAGA guy, who I would not normally be sharing or, or publishing here, but... They're doing, you know, a lot. This is MAGA country. So MAGA country is helping each other, and you got to shout them out for doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're wondering why citizens are being turned away that are coming to help in North Carolina and Tennessee, you'll want to hear my experience as someone who has been doing this as a private citizen for almost a decade, which makes me wonder like, how are you able to do that on a regular? But okay, mm -hmm. great on you. Thank you. I was able to get into and out of it in Asheville. We brought food, water, fuel, and other supplies as well as help people affected by the floods. But there are other reasons why they're not allowing outside help. I cannot confirm the reasons why in North Carolina, but I can tell you the reasons in other storms I've worked, I'll explain. Let me share with you the first disaster area. I finally realized that this was all about money. Go figure. No, no way. In the Florida, alert. oh my God! In the <laughs> Florida Keys, money. with Hurricane Irma, I believe somebody said they were in Hurricane Irma. Mm -hmm. After Texas got hit with Harvey, we finished our efforts in Texas and were the first citizen team to make it to Key Largo. The federal agencies had US one shut down just south of Key Largo and wouldn't let anyone in or out, even though the road was okay to pass. Mm -hmm. We explained to them that we had boats, jet skis food, water, chainsaws, and fuel to bring these people, they didn't care and wouldn't let us in. It was night by that point, and you, and you rarely saw the lights of vehicles in the distance on the individual keys. Meeting the emergency response teams from FEMA weren't even working. It was all quiet. We decided we'd go in anyway. They did a night mission. This guy's got to be like ex-CIA, definitely ex-Intel. Right. We filled up the boats and jet skis with all that we could reasonably carry and went by water around all the, their BS blockades and around their law enforcement presence on the water. It was just 87 miles by water to our first stop, Kujo Key and Sugarloaf Key. When we arrived there, we were Sugarloaf. greeted. Right, Sugarloaf. When we were, we were greeted by a homeowner for privacy, I won't know it, name him, even though we have video, who was elated to see us and all the supplies we brought. His house was in shambles. We started off loading supplies on the shoreline and helping to get them into what was left of his house. During that process, he explained to us that FEMA had set up a command center at a local high school on the island, but that they weren't doing anything to help the local residents and not even bringing them water. Instead, he explained that they were driving around using a loudspeaker, telling people to stay in their homes and vote, I'm sure, vote for Kamala Harris. They weren't even helping the homeowners with supplies. Like, they had the car out there. Why not stop? I was skeptical at first when he was telling me all this, but then he said something that broke my heart. He told us that the people of the Keys were all in despair 
because they had just seen weeks before the overwhelming support for Texas with Hurricane Harvey and the citizens of this country. He and his neighbors and all the on all the keys felt like Americans had forgotten about them completely because at this point, five days after landfall, all they had seen was FEMA and were uh, they were of no help. The residents were cut off from the outside world, no cell, no internet, no way to contact anyone or hear any efforts to try to help them. The only communication they had was from a local radio station on Sugarloaf Key that was broadcasting on AM to the surrounding keys. Yeah. That man, after hearing that there were citizens trying to help them bring help, trying to bring help, but refused entry by law, by law enforcement federally, was visibly upset. He and his neighbors thought the country had abandoned them. He insisted <laughs> that we went to his waterlogged truck and he would take us to, up to that radio station so we'd go live on air to tell the citizens trapped in the Keys that we, the American people, were there to help and that the government was trying to stop our efforts. And that's exactly what we did. Conk Republic. Fucking Bring it pirate, back. pirate radio, baby. <laughs> I love it. All right. in Cincinnati. So after that, we were determined to help as many people as we could, but we were met with red tape throughout the whole process and time we were in the Keys. We finally were, were able to talk some authorities to let us down to the Faro Blanco Resort and Marathon towards the end of Boot Key. This was the same hotel where state and local authorities were staging their personnel, and they were happy to see us. Mm -hmm. Stupid. But the people at the border were stopping them. I was able to coordinate several trucks of full, full of supplies to be brought down to the EOC and Marathon. I was privy to the EOC meeting, but was informed in that meeting that all the semi-trucks full of food, water, and hygiene supplies were to be turned around and not allowed to be offloaded for distribution by the EOC. What? Yeah. The reason they gave us was that these donations were not from companies on their preferred vendors list. And that they would not accept them, nor would they give them to the residents of the Keys impacted by the storm. Mm -hmm. At that point, I realized, again, this is all about the money. These preferred vendors are getting part of the money that are being released by the federal and state government for each disaster. Like I said, in turn, some of the vendors make it on the list because a friend gets them on the list. And then in return for getting ridiculously outlandish amounts of compensation for the services they render... They give kickbacks. Remember, Reef, you said the lowest bidder? Not necessarily yep. because of this. Yeah, it's nepotism. Not just nepotism, well, but uh, how's... specifically kickbacks, all right? Yep. That mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the people themselves are going to end up getting money or some kind of a, I think... we'll, we'll hook up your house with an extra bathroom or we'll do this or that or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. so, I think a wise man said it best. Cash rules everything around me. No, Gotta my, get the money. Uh, that was my daughter. Um, my daughter said that. <laughs> Definitely your daughter said that. So, um, it was a pretty good day. Unreal. So accepting outside donations, even though they're on location and can help people now, they would rather let people suffer so they can get their kickbacks. This meeting solidified my resolve to help these people, regardless of what the greedy officials wanted. We were going to feed the lower keys that were being neglected. This guy reminds me of Keith McHenry, but like Betty, Keith McHenry. <laughs> right. I diverted right. all semi trucks to the Faro Blanco resort and marathon and filled the entire first floor with pallets of food, water, and essential supplies and created food pantry for residents to come and get anything. And however much they needed from state troopers to yeah. the homeless, all were given wheelbarrows and free reign to get anything they needed. We also delivered supplies down to Big Pine Key. We helped establish the tent city on Big Pine Key. Big companies like Tito's, yeah. Tito's Vodka and Whalen just kept bringing trucks full of everything that was needed. When FEMA finally Mainly started... vodka for right? Florida. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of Tito's in the Keys, yeah. man. You know? Margaritaville's gotta, gotta stay running, you know? <laughs> But uh, when FEMA finally started handing out boxes of cans, never mind that the boxes were empty like the cans. I don't want to reference anybody's lyrics or anything. Um, limited to yeah. one per household, we were, we were filing cars full of food and supplies for people and pets. We're filling, not filing. 
right? There's so much more to the story in the Keys and further from there in storms that we worked. The common theme, though, is that the federal government always tries to keep citizens from helping and the local authorities, the ones that live and work in the area, are always happy to have outside help. Mm -hmm. I call out to Elon Musk, <laughs> although he... Fair enough. So, uh, you're gonna you're gonna laugh, okay. but he's, he sent Starlinks to everybody, and I'm he sure did. he did. And I'm gonna yeah. I, I'm sure Anna's gonna have something to say about that. But he calls out to Elon and anyone yeah. else who can help monetarily to help people like himself and those who work with them, who have the knowledge and will and the will to help those devastated by these disasters. Help us sidestep the red tape and get the help. And the, the people, the relief they they need. We're willing. We are the many, and we are ready. And no, you're not a total look, bro. Glowing. Help me, Elon Musk. Glowing. You are our only hope. But bro, that's what that, that that's what they're doing. You know, salt of the earth. Ryan Tyree, tire, tire, tire iron, Tyree. All right, these are his photos. Yeah, he he might be. He very well might be. Um, but. Bless him for this, seriously. Uh, father, photographer, yep. trucker, patriot, independent, conservative. So who knows it's which way he man. leads? Independent? We love independence. So here's another guy about helicopters, right? Now, this is a five minute video. I don't think I'm going to watch the whole thing, but. State Guard Special Missions Unit. And I'm also up here with Aerial Recovery, a nonprofit. I came up here on Sunday with aerial recovery before we even got activated. We flew up here and then we got activated, which is great. I have my team up here working as well. Here's the problem. I'm going to tell you everything that's happening from the ground, what I'm actually seeing, because what they're telling you is complete bullshit on the news and these politicians don't have a fucking clue and they're lying. And I'll say this now, I'll say it at the end of the video. The only thing I need from this video is helicopters. If I have helicopters, I can save lives. Without helicopters, I can't reach these people. It doesn't matter how many chainsaws and trucks I got, I can't get to them. They're 10 miles in, 20 miles, 40 miles in the mountains. There's no way to get with them or even communicate with them. I am literally flying around in a civilian helicopter looking for SOS messages carved in the mud or painted on the ground and we're dropping down and saving them. Jeez. What got me fired up about this was yesterday me and my team did the rescue of that 11 day year old baby and all these government officials and social media they're showing that video that pictures and video of that rescue and claiming that like they have some like government helped with that and i mean it even usa i think it was usa today wrote an article about it saying it was a florida national guard that went and got it like with a helicopter no of course it was me and my buddy charlie and a civilian named Zeb with his own personal helicopter out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Like, without that civilian, that baby would be dead. And the old lady we went and rescued after that, she'd be dead too because she had one day left of oxygen. Jeez. No one was going to go get them. I will tell you, when we go up in the air, I probably see 40 civilian helicopters. And I might see two Blackhawks, National Guard, military, whatever they are. That's it. No one's out there doing rescues. I have my entire team up here from Florida right now, and they have no ability to go rescue these people other than what they can drive to. And the people that are in dire need, they're out in the mountains. They are completely cut off. Now, I will say, I spoke to my congresswoman down in Florida, and she's a badass, and she made a bunch of phone calls, and now we got two contracted 60s coming up here tomorrow, which is great. I love that, but like, I still don't understand why we don't have more helicopters. Like we'll get a lot of work done with that, but there's no, uh, no there's no military. There's no, no one's doing nothing. I just, it, it blows my mind. And they're not even allowing people to see what's really going on. One of our friends yesterday, they were actually escorting CNN down at Lake Lore and they wouldn't <laughs> even let CNN, the sheriff department would not let them go videotape the bad areas, how destructive it is. I don't know why they don't want to show you all that, but I mean, it is bad. I should also say, when I flew here on Sunday, they actually stopped us from going in, the sheriff department. And it was because of a bunch of politics that they were claiming was a speaker of the House of North Carolina that was preventing us from even going in and trying to kick us out, which I have clarified today with North Carolina politicians that reached out to me, good on them, and they were like, that's complete bullshit. Speaker of the House has nothing. He wants you guys there. But this is the kind of political BS 
that is happening here right now. Like everyone's trying to be in charge without taking any type of action. Nobody wants to coordinate with anybody. Everybody wants to pretend like they're being the hero while these people are literally fucking dying in the mountains. Yep. And these people, like I'm saying, these people are limited medication. They're running out of oxygen and there's no one going to get them. The most effective way I have found to go find these people is by getting in a helicopter and flying down the rivers and roads and looking for SOS messages or people waving us down. And then we drop down and get them. Mm. We have all these people here. We have law enforcement. We have state guard, national guard. They have no way to go get these people. Yesterday when I was at the Asheville airport refueling, which by the way, the civilian is paying all this out of his own pocket. He's not even looking for a reimbursement. I think we did four refuelings yesterday. And that was like just in half a day. a lot of money. We're in Nashville, and I saw two Air Force helicopter 60s. And I knew they were PJs just looking at them. And I went up to them, like, hey, guys, like, what are y'all doing? And, like, this is what you need to be doing. This, 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 this is how I'm finding people. And they're like, we can't go. We're waiting on Title 10 orders. And I'm like, what? They just, they can't get any authority. There's military helicopters all over here sitting on the ground, and they can't do nothing. Yep. Even my JSOC boys in Fayetteville, they can't get orders to come out here. It is just the most disgusting thing, and they're killing these people. And I don't know why they're doing it. I don't know what kind of conspiracy. I've heard so many things, whatever you want to come up with, but they are literally allowing these people to fucking die in the mountains right now because we can't get helicopters. They got money for everything else in the fucking world right now, but if they could just get us helicopters, we could fly out there and rescue these people. So I hope this video goes viral. I hope these politicians get fired. I hope people get pissed off. They'll probably kick me out of the state of North Carolina for doing this, but you know what? I don't care because if I can save one more life for it, it's fucking worth it to me. Hell yeah, man. Like, <laughs> oh, all right, so slideshow on. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, helicopters. So now speaking of helicopters, I got to give a shout out. You know, I. I was a NASCAR fan for many, many years. Alex Knight famously knows very well that I'm. So it's okay. We still love you. I'm, well, All right. NASCAR, you know, North Carolina is NASCAR. Now North Carolina is NASCAR country. So Greg Biffle mm. used to be a cup driver. He drove for Jack Roush. He won a couple of championships at the at the mid level, but and did pretty well at the, at the cup level. But you know, he's made millions over his career. He's very comfortable. He's got a helicopter and lives well, but lives in North Carolina. He just put dropped everything and started running helicopter missions and doing relief aid. And he's one of these citizens that's doing it. So this is um, a, a video from Boone that he shared from one of his neighbors, right? Of, look out, of Jeez, just Christ. the kind of surge and destruction that comes okay. in. My car is gone. I'm okay, it's okay. The, the everything's okay. gone. It's, it's all okay. gone. It's okay. It's okay. Are your parents okay? They're okay. Was it's anybody okay. in the gym? It's okay. It's okay. Hey, hey, hey you're okay. Jesus. All right. So Greg yep. started flying helicopter missions. Here's day seven. And he's he's now a licensed helicopter pilot. A lot of these guys learn to fly. All right. And there's a bunch of different you know. comments underneath. Um, here's one where he says... The mirror that caught our attention well over a mile away, <clears throat> only way we were able to find someone stranded in the mountains at the bottom of a steep canyon, six attempts to yeah. land due to difficulty, but we got there, we got him a chainsaw, EpiPens, insulin, chicken food, formula, gas, two-stroke oil, and sandwiches pre-made from Harris Teeter before we left. Right, and here's the fly-in. And, like, you can see, like, the reflection of the... Yeah, big, 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 big. There, there they are, standing yeah. in the field. Little flash, With a mirror. flash, flash. Learn how to do that, by the way, people. That is not a hard skill to pick up. Make the little V with your finger, point it at the plane, mirror behind it. All right. You know. Then here they are. Waggle it around. And again, you know, we, we, we bag and dog on Elon Musk as well we should for being a douchebag. But yeah. He sent Starlinks to all the people in need. Free Starlinks for anyone who needs it. And as long as you can get power, as long as you can get your dish to the sky, you can have internet at least. So mm -hmm. and, you get a Starlink. You get a Starlink. But meanwhile, I saw today he he had tweeted that the government was actually stopping him from going somewhere to drop off a bunch, a whole bunch of them. 
but that was like 150 they had loaded in the back of that one. Mm -hmm. Um, and then again, now we get back into the 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 quartz mines. Now we get into the conspiracy stuff, the fun stuff. This right? flooding in North Carolina does not sit well with me. I think something's going on, so I decided to do some digging. So the first thing I yeah, find out is on North that Carolina has the actually, richest deposits bigger. of lithium in the entire world. Yeah, lithium for like cars, batteries, all that. Then I find out they have the world's highest quartz Remember deposits. Spruce Pine. And that quartz just so happens to be the world's supply for AI chips, microchips, and all kinds of stuff. 90%. We're talking a $530 billion industry. So this is where it gets interesting. So a company by the name of Piedmont Lithium allegedly, is awaiting a allegedly. state mining permit for a site in northern Gaston County. And Gaston County is completely flooded right now. The project was awaiting zoning approval because they were getting backlash from the residents and also city officials. And this lithium mine they want would be the third largest producer of lithium in the world. And they made a deal with Tesla already. Now remember the quartz? So in Spruce Pine, North Carolina, right next to Ashland, they are wanting to expand their mines even larger. And the residents aren't having it either. Enter the floods. People, these are mountain towns. It rarely, if not ever, floods in the mountains. I would know I grew up in the mountains in Colorado, which means none of these people have flood insurance. I mean, the media is saying biblical devastation in North Carolina, AKA like the worst thing that could happen. And you're not coming back from it. Read between the lines, people. Everything happens for a reason. I hope we don't get popped for that music. I just realized he had music behind him the whole time. Damn it. I didn't hear it. I didn't, I didn't even hear do, 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 do. it. Okay, well, good. Hopefully it blocked it out. Um, Hey, how about this? No power, but only minor damage to the pine, to the spruce pine quartz mine. Okay, I'll, sleep, I'll sleep all the night. Thank God. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. No way. Oh. Town destroyed. Mine. Just fine. Minor damage. Mm. Ah. Minor. I see what you did there. <laughs> minor damage. How about that? All right. With around 500 employees. Sibelco so is the largest employer in Mitchell County, a rural mountainous area northeast of Asheville. The company said all its employees and contractors have been accounted for following last week's storm, thank goodness, which dumped more than two feet of rain on Sp Spruce Pine and flooded the local North Toe River. Its facilities have been closed since September 26th. Huh. How about that? Now, again, Not the dulcimer! Aww. I was going to say, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, wait. Not the dulcimer! Wait! Damn. What are we going to play our folksy ballads with? What, what are we going to play? <laughs> you know? Okay, you're going to have to switch back to the guitar for Through the Eyes, I guess. So, um, <laughs> we, we actually played the dulcimer version on Friday night's clip show. Check out clip show Friday nights really? for all of you who hadn't, yeah, who, who don't watch it. That was that was a fun night. Um, look, God, look at them. Just, oh, oh no. God almighty. Uh, In the world's the smallest bobcat. And again, it's mud, even in places where it's not toxic, like in, uh, in Georgia the first, and in the first town you mentioned. Yeah. Um, yeah. Still, you know, anyone will tell you flood water is some of the most toxic oh, shit on its own. It's gross. So yeah. Once that all gets to turn into mud and then dry out in the sun, then yeah, like I don't see how any of that isn't toxic to be breathing in and, mm -hmm. and handling. All right, I got I got two more things here. All right, this is a thread that I thought was really interesting, and of course now we've got a, a community note. But this guy Prester, the Prester Khan, what's his story? We don't know. I'm sure a lot has been speculated on about what's going on in North Carolina. I'm a resident, one who has just now gotten enough of a signal to access the internet for more than a minute or two at a time. I'll explain. Utterly devastated, obviously, is the state we're in. We're not. It, were it not for the good old boys borrowing tractors and backhoes, borrowing, siphoning diesel, firing up chainsaws, we'd all have been stuck for days or weeks or longer than we have. Again, that's that's that Appalachian mountain man stuff. We sure yeah. as hell didn't have any state or federal assets coming to help. Our own governor didn't bother to declare a state of emergency until three days in. Around seventy percent of state aid, of aid is going to the Asheville area. Forgotten are we, mountain folk. All right. Um, terrible. And yeah, 
uh, declared a state of emergency on the 25th. The storm didn't hit on the 28th. So he actually declared it three days before. So that's the community note there. Okay. We, we that have lost more people than we know of yet, uh, we that have lost family, friends, homes, and businesses, save a single border patrol car, some National Guard trucks and helicopters, and Forest Service personnel. The real help I've seen has been that of volunteers, and we've seen this theme repeatedly. That's not only a disservice to us, but to you as well. My hometown is Spruce Pine, which is located about an hour from Asheville. Mm. What many of you don't know is that the world economy relies on my small town. We mine the purest quartz on earth. That quartz becomes the silica that we refine to 99.999999% purity. This is what I do when I go to work every day. Of course. That refined silica goes into the chips in your cell phones, TVs, solar panels, and a long list of et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Down in the mountains and in the county next door, in the town of Marion is the Baxter plant. Baxter is responsible for 80% of the IV bags used in every hospital across the country. What you should all be asking yourselves is why state and federal government assistance was not here in these small towns immediately following this disaster. I mean, these are literally like national, you know, like uh, the national security issues. If you don't have these these towns, the carnage, destruction and looting in places like Asheville make for good news stories. But the real story is here. Here, among the descendants of the Scotch and the Irish who settled these lands that reminded them of their own. <laughs> the rugged individualists who helped shape this country and who still take care of their own. It's our story, but it affects not only us, it affects all of us. All right, and big thank you to Dan Holloway for mentioning Spruce Pine. Literally, hmm? people who pulled triggers for their unions. Dude, is that the... You know? I know a guy named like that's all that area. I know a guy named Dan Holloway. I gotta check out and see if that's if that's him. Oh my god, that's amazing for mentioning Spruce Pine and on the, that mountain on the Drinking Brothers cause uh, um, podcast. I never heard of them. Drinking Bros. Apparently, person we'll get the the, right. the redneck kind of the from the red bandana union fight on that one of those Smoky Mountains over there. Yeah. Forget. Someone will remind me in chat. I'm sure. Somebody knows more than me. And then we've got you know, our friend Brooke. Brooke Hines. There's a few more brain cells left. Yep. I know we we're running long. So I got our friend Brooke Hines. She wanted to talk about a class in Western North Carolina, especially Asheville, and again looking at the mines versus where the relief is going. If you're unfamiliar. With the area, you might imagine the kind of Appalachia with missing teeth and moonshine. No, that's Irwin on the Tennessee side where people died at the plastic company. Uh, Asheville and surrounding towns look like Chimney Rock, Lake Lure, Bat Cave, Black Mountain are all like Sonoma or Mendocino, California now. These aren't places where eminent domain will be an, an issue. Yeah, Bat Cave. So she says from Realtor.com... Look at a view of Lake Lure. To the back cave. Mm -hmm. You've got, for the most part, million dollar and up homes, a few smatterings of older yep. homes that are half a million. That they'll probably have to be knocked down and rebuilt, mm -hmm. you know, as after they're sold. But you can see what's going on here is that these are, she says, here's a uh middling, a mid mid-range property in Chimney Rock. It's around a half a million. Obviously, an investment property. Hope they've got flood insurance. Average builder grade crap, vinyl, wood, and carpeted throughout, half a million bucks. All right. Here's a property up the road in Lake Lure, a million dollars and not waterfront. If you're familiar with the Asheville area, I'll bet this isn't the picture of Appalachia that most had in mind. Look at that. Beautiful. Right? Yeah, that seems like it to me. Three levels. I mean, yeah. places like this are gone or really severely damaged for sure. Yeah. But point being, don't use Chimney Rock area as the example of eminent domain risk. Instead, keep an eye on Spruce Pine, where the lithium deposits are. Notice what's between Asheville and Spruce Pine. Big mountains. 
it's a much different area. There's spruce pine up there. There's Asheville down there where she circled. All right. And then there's more mines money up here. Is there. This is where the money, the money is. And where they live is down here. And they take this to get to the money that's there. Right. If we can save the banks, if then we can save the world. So, holy shit. They need, they need a lot, a lot, a lot of help. A lot of help. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and we sometimes need some help here, too. Uh, if you're able to support your independent media streamers, all this research. I do all this on my own time, just like we all do. And uh, any help you can give to contribute. There's a bunch of different ways to do that in the chat. Uh, you can see it on there. It was Cash App, Kofi. QR code usually is around somewhere. It may not be tonight because we got a different show and a different layout. But um, yeah, you guys were talking about HARP. So let's talk about directed energy and whether this was intended. Because you guys have been looking into that. So I'd love to hear more about what you found. Well, I hate to say my, my HARP research hit a, a wall when I found out it's actually birds. What we've been seeing on the radar. <laughs> been in four minutes just <laughs> birds so it's really not yay allegedly. we all know the birds aren't real so you know i say that I every show fine. i say that every show birds aren't real <laughs> i um i'll i'll post tonight where i found a, a link for the file for the uh the cirrus report the project cirrus research from ge and this started in what 1949 and uh, they wrapped it up in like 54. And even then, our capabilities for cloud seeding, they, uh, the point I'm up to right now, they had finished a test in uh, New Mexico. And they were able to conclude that, that for sure, like this was a day where they weren't going to have rain. They were able to like conclusively say, that they were responsible for all of the rain on the two days they trialed this. And between those two days combined, they got 500, close to 500 billion gallons of water. And that's a lot of water. Uh, I can't, I that's can't remember what they said. Helene was, was trillion amount, but um, I don't remember how much, but still if this is, you know, in 1954, early 50s, that's that insane. We, we had that capability then. And it's amazing that just trying to say mm -hmm. we can do that is suddenly people will come out of the woodwork and, and come attack you as my poor wife found out on, on Facebook. Um, <laughs> but when you see, um, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene posted uh, that, of course we can do that. Everyone knows we can do that, whatever. And- uh, Jewish space from, lasers. Know, Sarah, what? Sarah, Sarah Silverman <laughs> popped up and was like, you're an anti-Semite. Yep. Uh, that's and great. Of course, as soon as someone like that says it, then it becomes a partisan thing. Now it's some crazy Republican theory. And sure enough, if you look in the comments anywhere, someone says something as innocuous as this is a technology that exists and there are reports and studies on it. People are just uh, just attack you like yep. you're saying that, you know, the Holocaust it wasn't real or that like birds aren't real. Like it's just it's insane the amount of uh, animosity that people have locked away like a sleeper agent until you you say something uh, that is objectively true, that you don't have to go well, full rabbit hole with it. You can just say like, right. this technology is real. And people are like, no, that sounds like something from a movie that's mm -hmm. just bogus. You're spreading misinformation and you should have your account taken away. Well, well and then, like Rachel then at the same time, we've got like, you know, climate change because a couple of rich assholes decided to make money off that system. Mm -hmm. That's totally not real now. But what? Would you like me to show you the amount of bleached coral? Like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah, like, not that's definitely back. happening. <laughs> right. Like, you know, yep. no matter how yep. many Krabby Patty recipes you have, plankton isn't coming back. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I just find it like, 
it's like that dichotomy of it can't be climate change, so it has to be Jewish space lasers. Yep. And it can't be Jewish space lasers. It can't be. Cli- it's like, you know, both those things could possibly be, you know, like. For sure. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the same thing with the election. No. People can't have two two things exist in their brain at the same time. That's too much. That's way too much. Right. No space <laughs> lasers. It's too difficult. No space lasers. We're not allowed to have space lasers. Well, this right. it's either that is well, just or I, sharks I love, I with lasers this, right? on their freaking and hands. I, I, again, I, whoever put this up on on TikTok, thank you for your service. Un- incredible. Yep. Um, Bless you. But but seven hundred seventy dollar Hermes Her- Hermes uh, a belt. There you go, peasant. Seven hundred fifty bucks. Yep. I again. There's the. So what an ugly belt for seven hundred dollars. First of all. <laughs> Fucking gross. What First a of all, fuck, it makes you manly. look like a fucking manly. What is it? What is it? M? What is it? W for Wumbo? No, it's what an H. What is that? It's an H for Ernie. Like, no, <laughs> but it's people bad. get the reference. They know what I'm talking about. You just never watch SpongeBob. It's fine. It's bad. You know, it's bad. It's fine. All right, it's and, real and, bad. And and uh, well, we're gonna go from fr- from one bed to another. Yes, that that's Doctor Nick's producer credits for the night. Woot woot. Yes, because Doctor Nick actually also, was, was the one who Nick shared it. Said harp harp was a good beer. How dare you, Dougie G? Also, also get out of the beer. One fact that that just seems to be getting out is that um, one of the uh, majority investors. For uh, BlackRock's mining division is Doug Emhoff. No, okay. Kamala like Harris's like husband? like the first man. Yeah, about to be yeah. the first the first dude. Yeah, that that guy. Ah, nothing nice. to see yeah. here, folks. Right, exactly. exactly. Bad news, nothing bad to see here. <laughs> Ah. Which I'm sure will be a surprise to no one. Out in the Oprah Winfrey. That's right. 